Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text before us this morning for our consideration is taken from the prophet Isaiah. We read in the 28th chapter, beginning at the 16th verse. So this is what the Sovereign Lord says. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who trusts will never be dismayed. I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the plumb line. Hail will sweep away your refuge. The lie and the water will overflow your hiding place. Your covenant with death will be annulled. Your agreement with the grave will not stand. When the overwhelming scourge sweeps by, you will be beaten down by it. As often as it comes, it will carry you away. Morning after morning, by day and by night, it will sweep through. The understanding of this message will bring sheer terror. This is God's word. <clears throat> Dear friends in Christ, on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, I alluded to the irony of the way in which we celebrate the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ. I won't repeat everything I said here, but... So we're singing joyfully the Christmas hymns at this time of year. Others are fighting back the tears. Some are filled with great joy. Others are dealing with great sorrow. The world rejoices in the birth of Jesus Christ, and certainly his parents, Mary and Joseph, rejoiced in the birth of their son, but we think of all the children that Herod had his soldiers come down and kill shortly after the birth. And we think of the weeping and the sorrow and the pain of those families. And so we see that we live in a church militant. It will always continue to be this way. We are called to take the gospel into the world, and Satan is there ready to fight us every step of the way, to make our road miserable. We are battling for the hill, and Satan is strong in his opposition. God has blessed us with that task, and sometimes it seems very difficult and long, and other times it's such a joy to be in the service of the Lord. This morning we see one more irony, and it's not an irony, it's a truth. It also has to be expressed. In a way, it's somewhat difficult sermon to preach here, just a few days after the joy of the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. But we know that our Lord came to bring peace on earth. He also came to bring judgment for all those who would not follow, believe, and receive him as their Savior from sin. Today in the church is celebrated a lesser known minor festival of the church year referred to as Holy Innocence Sunday. It's always on the 28th of December. And it's a recognition of when Herod was, what he felt was betrayed by the wise men. They never came back because he said, go, go and, and worship this child. Then, then come back to me and, and tell me about your experience there. Tell me about him. Because he had in mind to, to put up a death, of course. Well, the wise men did not come back. And after he realized that, then he was enraged. And he sent his soldiers down to take the lives of all the children, two years and under. And when we say two years and under, remember the way of counting for them. Anything into the second year became the year. So these could have been, you know, one year and a couple months and so on. But that, nevertheless, there was still the number of male children that were killed. We don't have that number. Some speculate on that, of course. But and we realize that, yes, Jesus came into not the pretty little peaceful, pristine, pristine world that we sometimes want to make it out to be. But he came into a world that was marred, smeared, and infected by sin. And as a result, that also needs to be preached about. The Lord says in our text today, I will make the measuring line sure, and that measuring line will be justice. And the plumb line, the plumb line will be the, the righteousness. 
those of you who are builders know that when you start a structure, you want the foundation to be sure, and then you get out your plumb line, you get out your level and things like that, because as you start to build, you want to make sure everything is right. You don't want to just uh, take a look, you know, look down, oh, it looks okay to me, and keep going. Before long, you have this structure that's all out of whack, and you have to tear it down and start all over again. The Lord is very precise in his judgment. He's very precise with his justice. The soul that sins, it will perish. And Jesus came to announce that too, and announce God's condemnation. We live in a world where there are a lot of people who don't want to accept that. They want to say that, oh, I cannot believe in a God who would do something like that. So thus, when someone dies, they're all going to be in this wonderful place. And then you hear these thoughts of, oh, now they're looking down upon us and such like that. For anyone who did not receive Jesus in his life here on earth, they are certainly not looking down from heaven upon us now. They are receiving God's judgment, God's punishment against sin. But yet that's what is tried to be taught to us. And that's what the Lord is saying here. Your covenant with death will be annulled. Your agreement with the grave will not stand. There are many of those that said, this is too hard a teaching. This preaching discourages people. It, it, we want to be happy. We want to put a happy face on it and such like that. Uh, there's nothing happy about sin. There is nothing happy about the unrepentant heart and soul. It's ugly, it's dirty, it's filthy. And take, for example, the wrath of Herod. We can see no easier picture to understand the nature of sin than to look to what length he went. And people are still putting Jesus to death today. I want nothing to do with him. I don't want to take the time. And perhaps that's something we can pause at for just a moment. We don't want to take the time. Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. Namely, she heard what was being said about Jesus. She saw what was happening. She remembered what the angels said to her. She remembered what, what uh, the shepherds and then the scene there. How did they get here? Who told them? What's this thing about? Yes, an angel appeared to me. I can understand how an angel appeared to them because an angel appeared to me and told me this very thing. And it happened just as the angel said. Now they are coming. And it happened just as they said. And now in our reading today from, from the gospel, she goes into the temple, and I'm sure, you know, bright and beaming as a mother of a newborn would be, and then to have Simeon say, oh, this child, this child's going to be a cause for much hardship, much, much pain, much, much despair over you. What would she have thought? I thought this was the Savior of all. I thought all would embrace him. Ah, uh, Mary, you still live in the world. You still live among sinners, of which you are also one. You still live with that dramatic and, and, and very absolute need for the Savior. In your arms is that one, yes. The text goes on to talk about you have put your hope in these things, your, your covenant with death, your agreement the overwhelming scourge will sweep down upon you. This was written at a time when the northern kingdom had been taken into captivity by the Assyrians, and it was still a little time yet before the Babylonians would come in and take the southern kingdom of Judah. And so the people in Judah were sitting back there. Oh, it's really a bad thing that happened up there to, to Israel. Really a bad thing. Um, won't happen to us, though. Won't happen to us, though. How many people do you know, if they talk about judgment, what won't happen to me? Well, I don't bother myself with that. Oh, I don't care about that. Uh, don't talk about that. That, that presses me. Don't, why do you bring that up? I don't want to talk about that. That's morbid. That's, uh, you know, ooh, I don't want to talk about that. We must. We must talk about that. We must talk about sin and its damning effect that it has in our lives. We must appreciate the fact that if we do not 
receive Jesus Christ into our heart by faith, we will be lost forever. He came to save, but he also came to punish sin. He also came to declare God's wrath against sin. And we need to hear that too. We need to humble ourselves. We need to reassess our lives. We need to look at ourselves. We need to say, wake up. Take this seriously. Wake up. Get out of your slumber. Don't put off until tomorrow, next week, next month, the things that you ought to be concerned about today. I have come to bring judgment. But more importantly, I've come to bring peace and forgiveness. We heard that with the Christmas story. We also need to hear words like the Lord was saying through the prophet Isaiah to his people. Judgment. And so, dear friends, we build upon the promises of God. We know that that judgment will not affect us because we know in whom we believe. We embrace and we hold fast to our Savior Jesus Christ. We believe that he came to save the sinners of which I am chief and foremost. He came to pay for my sins. He came to deliver me from my sins. And, and he lifts us up and he makes us realize how blessed we are. Not because of anything that we've done. Not because of any actions on our part. Not because the Lord you know, said, I think I like you better than I like that one. No, simply because God so loved the world. And we believe and we receive Jesus. And that joy of Christmas fills our heart with tremendous joy. But for those who don't receive them, there is no covenant with death. There is no covenant with the grave. There is no thought of, well, God won't really do that, or I don't really believe in hell, or I don't really believe in punishment. If you don't believe in it, why did Jesus die on a cross? If you don't believe in the suffering of hell, why did Jesus suffer? If God in the end says everyone is forgiven, I really didn't mean all those things, why would he send his son to be here on earth? We know that. We don't like to talk about that so much. We don't like to dwell on those things because we have been... We have been born again. We have come to a taste and appreciate the joy of our salvation. But a lot of times, we get tired. We just want to let it go. Things happen. I get upset with anger with, with God. I get angry with God. He's not treating me well. The aches and the pains are getting worse and worse, and I'm living each day in, in agony and sorrow. And why are you doing this to me, Lord? Simeon and Anna give us a very good picture this morning, don't they? People who live their lives in faith to the very end. Not just for a season, but for every season of their life. Throughout their lives, they clung to that promise. God will send his Messiah. God will send his deliverer. And so when Simeon saw, my eyes have seen your salvation. Dear friends, your eyes have seen your salvation too. Cling to that and rejoice in the salvation that is yours and rejoice that the Lord has rescued you and lifted you up from that pit and made you his dear children. Concentrate and focus and look into those things and, to, and, and rejoice in the good news. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in a true faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.